In 2023, two travel heavyweights, American Airlines and the American Society of Travel Advisors, or ASTA, clashed over the carrier's solution to move 40% of its fares from traditional systems to channels adopting new distribution capability, or NDC. Many agencies turned out to be unprepared for that change. All of a sudden, they lost access to low prices from the world's largest airline by passengers carried and destinations served. ASTA issued a 50-page complaint to protect the interests of agencies. It accused AA of discriminatory practices that caused serious consumer harm in the form of higher airfares and reduced competition. In response, the carrier claimed that ASTA chose favoritism to businesses reluctant to modernize and invest in technologies. ASTA objected that it fully supports progress, but in its current state of development, NDC impairs rather than improves service and efficiency. This back and forth proved one thing. NDC already matters much in air travel. But why is it so important? What's the problem with traditional airline retailing that's been here for decades? And how will NDC change it? New Distribution Capability is an initiative to make flight shopping with travel agencies and other resellers work the same way it does on Amazon, with detailed descriptions, photos, a wide range of ancillaries, and personalized offers. At its heart lies a modern data communication standard that lets airlines present their products on third-party platforms the way they do it on their own websites. The International Air Transport Association, IATA, first introduced NDC in 2012, basing it on the Extensible Markup Language, or XML, that emerged in the 1990s. From the perspective of the 2020s, the whole idea may seem a bit outdated, right? But no. It's not, since airline travel is still fueled by an even older communication protocol, Edifact. Basically, it's a battle between legacy, pre-internet, and modern API-centric technologies. And Edifact has got a maximum of 200 messages you can do. It was created in 2000, uh, 1980. Uh, the internet started in 1993. So it's a Kodak moment. Russell Karstensen is the founder and CEO of Aeronology, a full-service travel point of sale that established NDC connections with all major airlines. Currently, Edifact still dominates the air travel market, so let's start with how it works. Edifact, electronic data interchange for administration, commerce, and transport, has been serving the travel industry for nearly 40 years. Fast, highly structured, standardized, keeping messages as tiny as possible. This impact protocol proved effective at times of expensive private networks with extremely low bandwidth. Edifact breaks a complex flight booking process into a series of small steps. At each step, systems exchange specific request and response messages. Say, a travel agency sends a separate request to get a list of flight options for given dates and city pairs. You then make a series of requests to get pricing details and seat maps, create a passenger name record, and so on and so on. There can be dozens of steps to complete the booking. Edifact has enough messages to cover the end-to-end -end ticket selling flow. Nobody complained, until the internet came and changed the way businesses sell products and people do shopping. So what's wrong with Edifact? There are several factors that make Edifact inadequate in the era of the World Wide Web, e-commerce, Amazon, and eBay. First, Edifact's rigid and minimalistic structure allows airlines to share only a small portion of information about flights and related services. Seat upgrades, extra baggage, extra legroom, in-flight entertainment, and Wi-Fi, a la carte menu options, insurance, you name it. Unfortunately, most of these things can't be merchandised via Edifact channels. Besides that, short Edifact messages are not for conveying rich content, such as texts and photos. So carriers can't show beautiful pictures of their lounges and in-flight meals, nor can they provide detailed descriptions of available add-ons. In 2023, carriers made an average of $37 per passenger on ancillaries. Without Edifact limitations, they definitely could make more. However, 
The biggest issue here is the outdated infrastructure that runs Edifact. It's not Edifact that is the problem. It's the underlying processes that are archaic that are the problem. And when I say the underlying processes, I mean the distribution machinery. Anne Cederhall is a travel technology strategist and educator. You know, we have fares that have to be filed and can be published an hour later. We have schedules that are separated from that. We have, and, and these fares, by the way, have to be distributed to third party, um, uh, third party distribution companies who then need time to process them. You hear how, how antiquated this is and how far from, from real time. Edifact communication in air travel happens via middlemen, sitting between airlines and travel agencies. The centerpiece of the entire scheme is global distribution systems, GDSs. They aggregate scraps of air information, schedules, fares, business rules, and availability to create air products for resellers. In this scheme, airlines have little to no control over what they sell via indirect channels. They can't gather information about travelers, personalize their surfaces, or create bundles. Nor can they set more granular prices at the time of the search, depending on the current market conditions and a particular passenger. Historically, Edifact allows airlines to divide all seats on the flight into 26 price points or fare buckets. Guess why? because there are 26 letters in the English alphabet. Each bucket comes with its own predefined prices and related sets of rules, like refundability or how many award points the fare earns. Airlines make certain buckets available via GDSs depending on demand. Once a lower cost bucket fills up, the price jumps to the following predefined level. Say the cheapest fare is $200 and it's sold out. The next bucket is set at $250. The airline can't offer something in between, even if nobody wants to pay the $250 fare. The NDC approach solves this problem by enabling continuous pricing when carriers can set any price between two buckets based on demand. Continuous pricing is a way for traditional airlines to mimic dynamic pricing, which is typically used by low-cost carriers that do not file fares. NDC also addresses other Edifact limitations. Let's take a closer look at its benefits. Instead of old-fashioned Edifact, NDC harnessed the extensible markup language, a child of the internet era, born from a need for electronic commerce to share large volumes of content. Unlike its predecessor, XML, lets businesses easily add any data by creating new markups or tags that describe this data. Additionally, platform-agnostic XML empowers airlines to distribute their products via online travel agencies bypassing GDSs. It means carriers avoid paying extra fees and, most importantly, take back control over their products. I would say in simple terms, NDC is about cost cutting and ability to control the way airlines' content is being distributed. Victor Negrilov is managing partner and co-founder of Direct, an IATA-certified flight aggregator and NDC pioneer. Unlike the traditional Edifax standard, NDC represents a paradigm shift by offering more opportunities and flexibility in distribution. The transition of power from GDSs to airlines changes the entire reservation process. In the Edifact-driven world, it takes dozens of small steps to reserve a flight. In the NDC scenario, the booking flow is reduced to just three steps – shop, order, and pay. At the shop stage, a passenger visits a travel agency website and enters search details, such as dates, itineraries, and preferences. The agency sends this information to the airline. The airline generates offers in real time to fit a passenger's unique needs. It can also price their products according to the current market conditions. Once the passenger chooses a particular option from the diversity of air products and clicks the Buy Now button, an offer turns into an order. The traveler pays for the flight, and that's it. The order contains all product details and captures any changes, like upgrading to the next cabin class, making cancellations, and of course, adding new ancillaries. All these eventually translate into a much better customer experience. And I think it's much clearer if I give you an example. I had a friend of mine that was traveling in one of these winter storms in, in the US recently. And um, 
and of course you know it, there were there were disruptions and the best communication was of course with the united app that's what we want to do right that's where we want to be whereas my friend of mine was told that he could not get these messages and he would have to contact his travel agency and what united are trying to do is they're saying if you book using ndc the passenger will have full access to the app and everything that any direct customer of united airlines gets and of course that is a huge customer experience advantage ndc seems to benefit everybody travelers travel resellers travel suppliers the question is why does ndc adoption take so long and cause so much controversy despite all the obvious advantages Unfortunately, there are some barriers to NDC's implementation. Industry experts agree that legacy infrastructure is a critical roadblock to NDC advancement. All major players have been heavily investing in GDS-centric distribution systems for so long that their resistance to the revolutionary and, frankly speaking, costly shift comes as no surprise. So the biggest issues are simply infrastructure. So the big players, as I mentioned, the large TMCs and their small, medium-sized TMCs, they're built around Edifact. Uh, their accounting systems are built around Edifact. And the point that is causing a lot of angst in the United States is they all believe you've got to do a passive segment in the GDS to download an NDC booking into the mid office. That's changing. The smart mid office back office companies are moving to API driven applications and that will change everything. Another problem is that resellers lack the motivation to spend money on the transition to a new paradigm. In the traditional model, airlines pay fees to GDSs for each booking made, and GDSs share these fees with travel agencies. NDC enables carriers to save on GDS commissions, so agencies lose their incentives as well. Sellers incentivized by the GDSs uh, are just uh, reluctant uh, to, to switch. Shifting to NDC is costly either for airlines and for sellers. But if airlines' motivation is quite clear, the seller's motivation uh, to invest into it uh, isn't clear enough. Uh, why they should invest, why sellers should invest uh, into the switching to NDC if they are making uh, less money on that? Yet, little by little, the air distribution landscape is turning towards NDC, and this process can't be stopped. By the beginning of 2024, over 70 airlines, over 20 resellers, and over 70 system providers participated in the Airline Retailing Maturity, or ARM Index program by IATA. This program replaced the previous four-level NDC certification. It verifies the NDC readiness against 76 capabilities. Companies can choose, develop, and certify the most critical NDC functionality and save money on less important or unnecessary features. Big players powerful enough to force changes, at least in their domestic markets, are on the arm list with a bunch of features validated. You look at a United Airlines, uh, you look at the United States, United Airlines and American Airlines are really going hard on NDC. That's two thirds of the market. And if you throw in Air Canada, uh, which is moving hard on the NDC, that's a fairly big part of the market in um, and part of the market in North America. Latam in South America, really they're the major player in South America. Coca, uh, Copa Airlines in the, um, in uh, Panama are moving quickly into NDC. So there's going to be the small players that are always going to struggle and it's going to take them longer to get out of it. The bigger players are moving to NDC. The key is to have, the, uh, have access to all those different um, supply air, air channels, and that's what we do. GDSs also became active participants in the NDC implementation process. Travelport, Sabre, and especially Amadeus slowly but continually add new NDC connections and deliver rich content from major airlines alongside traditional Edifact offers. GDSs are definitely not going to give up their leading positions, and they probably won't if they keep turning from NDC blockers to NDC drivers. There's one thing that they have got, they've got a massive distribution spread. So you can make a booking in Mongolia, 
You can make a booking in uh, Botswana. You can make a booking in you know, Cook Islands. It's all that distribution channel that the GDSs have built up over many, 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 many years. As they transition, you know, they are going to be a very serious player as long as they tr- transition correctly. We can only guess how long the transition to NDC will take. The only thing we know for sure is that it won't happen tomorrow. We have loads of airlines that have not even started on thinking about a direct API. They're not even there in the mindset, right? So you will have to live in some sort of parallel world And that's what I mean, the GDSs are going to be around for a long time because they're going to represent that parallel world. But it is going to become smaller and smaller. Eventually, all players, from small leisure OTAs to large TMCs, will have to adopt NDC, and nothing's going to change that. Join our channel to learn more about travel technologies. Leave a like if you found the video insightful and make comments to share your opinion on the matter. See you soon.